Hello everyone. In this session, we will take a look at a series of multiple choice questions. You would learn about what is the questions asking you about. So you would learn about how to approach this question from a knowledge. What is the question asking about? What's the topic? What's the area of competency that they want you to know? That's one that's important. Two is how to answer the question, strategy on how to answer the question. I always tell the students to put yourself in the shoes of the exam writer. It's so easy to write the correct answer choice because that's the correct answer choice. What's more difficult for the exam writer is to select ex actually the wrong answers. And under those circumstances, if they select obvious wrong answers and you understand the topic, it's easy to spot those wrong answers. So it's harder for the exam writer to choose the wrong answer because they have to, to make the wrong answer difficult. And that's difficult by itself because the right answer is correct. They know the correct answer, they can put it. So if you understand the topic, it's easy for you then to spot what's obviously wrong. So that's what you need to know. Also, as I'm going over these questions, I will make sure I will point out what to look for in the question. For example, if there's except four, all the following are correct except, you have to be careful. Except four is you're looking for one answer, maybe three incorrect, one correct, or three correct and one incorrect. So you have to be careful what you are being asked. Always, if there is a question with a lot of numbers, read what you are being asked first because if the question involve a lot of lot of financial data they could ask you many questions first look at what am i being asked so as you navigate through the data you would start to kind of pull that relevant data that you need to answer the question so i will show you these techniques step by step whether you are a cpa exam candidate cma student or an accounting student or a finance student you need to learn how to tackle multiple choice question it's not only the topic it's the technique the strategy that i will show you let's go ahead and start to tackle these questions let's take a look at this question all the following are required to report information about earnings per share which one are they all public companies, public and non-public, all non-public, some public provided that they meet certain criteria. And the answer is this. Guess what? EPS should be presented for publicly traded companies, all publicly traded companies. Therefore, non-public is not required. Some public, no. All public companies. Therefore, the answer is A. Make sure you know this. Mem memorize that and it should take you a second to answer a question like this. Let's take a look at this question. And the question asks, giving the transaction determine year one weighted average number of shares outstanding for ABC company. So we're looking for the weighted number weighted average number of shares outstanding. January 1st, we had 20,000 shares with a par value of $2 till February. On February 1st, we issued 10,000 new shares. So from January 1st till February 1st, we had 20,000 shares. Uh, I'm sorry, we it, we had 10, 20,000. Now on, on February 1st, we issued 10,000 shares. On June 1st of the same year, the company had a stock split 241. Okay, then we went all the way till September. So from February 1st till September 1st, we had those additional 10, thousand shares okay what does that mean well let's look at it stop here and see what would happen as of September 1st as of September 1st we had 20,000 shares from January till February on February we issued an additional 10,000 okay great but 
what happened what's the important event that happened was on June 1st on June 1st so between February and September we had two for one stock split what does that mean it means that 20,000 times 2 becomes 40,000 okay and the 10,000 times 2 becomes 20,000 so just those are retro this is retroactive application of the shares now we can prorate them uh, so the 40,000 let me just do it here the 40,000 shares they were outstanding for 1 12 of the year and the 20,000 shares they were they started in uh, no, I'm sorry not 20,000 as of from September February to September we had an additional 20 so we had 60,000 shares from February from February uh, first so February March April May June July and August till September 1st that's 712 that's prorated at 712 so what we did is we took into account the retro the retroactive stock split and we prorated the shares now 40,000 times 112 is 3,333 60,000 times 712 is 35,000 shares now let's see what happened on September we purchased 5,000 shares remember the last time we had was uh, 60,000 then we purchased 5,000 shares so when we purchase 5,000 shares we will deduct 5,000 shares now we're down to 55,000 shares this is September so starting September 1st till when till December 1st finally December 1st till December 1st we had 55,000 shares so that's September October November we're going to multiply this by 312 and that's going to give us 13,750 on December 1st so starting December 1st we sold 4,000 shares so this is till the end of the year till December 31st so if we sold 4,000 shares 55 plus 4 we had 59,000 shares and that's 112 of the year that's 4,970 now if we add them all up if my math is right it should add up to 57,000 now will you see a question like this on the CPA exam a multiple choice as a multiple choice I highly doubt it as a multiple choice as a simulation very very possible very possible but I explained the steps here but what you need to do is to go over the answer choice and look examine the answer choice and make sure you are comfortable with computing the weighted average number of shares outstanding if you like what you just saw how to solve these multiple choice questions whether you are an accounting a finance student a CPA exam candidate a CMA exam candidate I strongly suggest you visit my website for additional MCQs video MCQs that's gonna help you whether you are a student or studying for a professional certification the best investment you can make is invest in yourself check out farhatlectures.com start your free trial so you have access to additional resources and succeed good luck and i hope to see you on the website